Okay, 5.4 is called equilateral and isosceles triangles. So here we have an isosceles triangle, which means it's a triangle that has exactly two congruent sides. An equilateral triangle is going to have three congruent sides, but we'll get to that in a minute. Okay, so first some vocab associated with um, isosceles triangles. So um, the, the two congruent sides are going to be called legs. So this would be a leg, and this is a leg. And then um, the non-congruent side is going to be called the base. So that one I'm highlighting down there is called the base. Okay. And um, there's also special names for the angles in an isosceles triangle. So the, um, the angle that is formed by the two legs is called the vertex angle. Okay. So that's formed by legs. Yeah, it doesn't have to be at the top of the triangle because I could flip this picture upside down, but it's always the angle that's formed by the two legs. Okay, and then um, the two angles that are touching the base, um, so these two angles in this particular picture, those that's going to be a base angle pair. So you could call those the, the base angles. Um, I'll just say base angles, okay? They're touching the base. Okay, all right, so that brings us to the base angles theorem, um, also known as the isosceles triangle theorem. I have trouble not calling it the isosceles triangle theorem because another book I used to use called it that. Okay, so if you have an isosceles triangle, and this is, here is an isosceles triangle, I've got the two congruent sides, then the base angles are going to be congruent. All right, and so um, you have to make sure you find the right angles. So in this picture here, this would be my base because that's the non-congruent side. Okay, so the base angles are going to be touching the base, right? So uh, the base angles are always across from the two congruent sides. That's another way to, to think of it. Um, you know, those are both across from those sides. Okay, but those are my two congruent angles there. Okay, and um, you can uh, flip this around as well. The converse of this also works. So if you have a triangle where you have two congruent angles, then the sides um, opposite those two angles are going to be congruent. So if you think about the side opposite this angle, hey, that's over there. Side opposite this angle is over there. So those two. Um, those two sides would be congruent, which means it's an isosceles triangle, right? So if you've got two congruent angles, you've got two congruent sides, okay? And it is important to remember which is the original theorem and which is the converse. Here's how I remember it. In um, the, the original theorem, you start off with an isosceles triangle. That's an isosceles triangle, right? In the um, converse, you end with, a, uh, with, a, with an isosceles triangle. I don't know. That's how I remember it. Okay. So um, then here, this is an equilateral triangle. I didn't, um, I didn't um, give a definition for this, but it's just a triangle where all three sides are congruent, okay? And if a triangle is equilateral, then it's also going to be equiangular. So it means all three angles are going to be congruent, okay? And another thing that's worth noting um, is that hey, all three angles have to add up to 180, and if they're all congruent, if I'm splitting up that 180 into three equal slices, then it's always going to be 60 degrees, 60 degrees, 60 degrees. Equiangular has to be 60, 60, 60. That's the only way you can cut up 180 into three uh, equal parts. Okay. The converse of this is also true. If you have an equiangular triangle, it will be equilateral. Okay. All right, so let's take a look on the next page at some examples how we can use some of these theorems. So um, pretty much this entire uh, section, any problems you see are going to involve either an equi equilateral triangle or uh, an isosceles one or sometimes both. So here we've got an equilateral triangle, something, ah, equilateral triangle, all three 
sides are congruent, that means all three angles are congruent. So all of these are going to be 2x. Okay, so you could say 2x plus 2x plus 2x equals 180. That would be totally fine. But um, also, hey, I know that this is going to be 60 degrees, 60 degrees, 60 degrees. Because it has to be for an equiangular triangle. And then so I know 2x is going to equal 60. And to me, that's going to be quicker than writing an equation, adding up all three angles. Okay, so then I'm just uh, dividing by 2, and x is going to equal um, 30. Okay, here I've got um, a, uh, an isosceles triangle, and um, I've got two congruent angles here. It's really important that you get the right two angles being congruent, the correct angle. So x is not going to equal y. Uh, y is not going to equal 50 because this isn't a pair of base angles. This isn't a pair of base angles either. So you got to think where the base is. Well, the two sides with the ticks are the legs, so that means this is the base. So that means the two angles attached to the base are the base angles. These are going to be my congruent angles by the uh, base angles theorem. So that means x is going to equal 50. Okay. Um, so how do I get y? Because they're not congruent. Well, now that I know that this is 50, um, well, I've got two of the three angles in this triangle. So I can say y plus 50 plus 50 is going to equal 180. Every triangle, all three angles add up to 180, right? Um, so just combine those 50s, then subtract 100. And y will equal 80 then. OK. All right, the next uh, set of problems are interesting because we've got more than one triangle. Um, OK, so um, I'm looking at both of these and thinking, OK, do I have any equilateral or isosceles triangles? This triangle is um, equiangular, which means it also would be equilateral, right? So I know these three sides are going to be congruent to each other, OK? Then looking at the other triangle, I've got these two congruent angles. So that means that the sides across from those should be congruent as well, OK? The base would be down here then, OK? That means these two sides are congruent. Hey, I've already got one tick there, so I'll put one tick there as well, OK? So now let's try to solve for um, x and y. I'm going to start with y, actually. y is just going to be 4 because those are congruent, right? And um, so any of the ticks, any of the sides with the one tick are going to be 4. So this is 4. That's also going to be 4. So now I can say x plus 1 is going to equal 4. And I can solve for x. And x is just going to be 3. OK. All right. Next problem. Um, OK, I can see, OK, the, the bottom triangle here is isosceles. I've got those two congruent sides. So that means, you know, these two angles are congruent. So if this is x, I can say this is x as well, OK? It's tempting to think that this um, triangle is um, isosceles. And it may turn out to be isosceles, but I, don't, I can't see that it's isosceles right from the get-go. OK, so I've only got the one isosceles triangle right now. So let's see what we can do with this. Um, so um, the, the numbers we have, we have that 30 degree angle. We also have the 90 degree angle. The whole big triangle is a, is a right triangle. Um, all right, so it would be great if I could get this angle. Because if I can get that angle, then I can write an equation to solve for x. And I can get this angle because I've got a linear pair right up here, right? Together, these two, um, those two angles form a straight line, a straight angle, which would be 180 degrees. So that means that this is going to have to be 150, right? Because together they form 180. And now I can take the, uh, this bottom triangle, the isosceles one, and write a little equation. I can say x plus x plus 150 is going to equal 180. Okay, so I can combine those x plus x would be 2x and subtract 150.
and then divide by 2 and x is going to be 15. Okay. Whoops, I'm off screen a little bit. Move up here so x comes out to 15 then. Okay. All right. Um, so there are a couple of different uh, ways we can solve for y. Um, one way would be to use the big right triangle. If I'm looking at this triangle, I've got the 90 degrees down there. Now I've got x, so I also have this is going to be 15 degrees, right? So if I want y, I can say, okay, all three angles in the, in the big green triangle are going to add up to 180. Okay. So that's what I'm going to do here. All right. Um, so y plus 15 plus 90 is going to equal 180. Okay. So let's see, 15 and 90 is 105. Let's subtract 105, and then y will be 75. Okay, another option would have been, since I've got, now that this is 15, I can figure out what this angle would be, um, because I could take 90, 90 minus 15 to get this angle. Then I could use this triangle here to solve for y. So that's another option. Um, okay. All right, on to the, uh, the last page here. Okay, I've got a, kind of an hourglass uh, figure happening here. So when you have um, intersecting lines like this, that means we've got vertical angles, right? So that means if this is x, this is x as well. Okay. All right, and then I've got some isosceles triangles here, all right? So looking at the bottom triangle, the, bo the base of this bottom triangle, that's the non-congruent sides right here, so the two angles attached to that are congruent to each other. Okay, so these two are congruent. They're not necessarily congruent to that one, but I know that both of these are 55, okay? Same kind of thing in the top triangle. That's my base, so the two angles attached to that are congruent to each other. Okay. Now, don't assume that these two are going to be congruent to those two. It's just that these two are congruent to each other, so I'm going to put three little ticks on those. And it may turn out that they're, they all, all four are congruent, but just to begin with, that's what I have. Okay. So I want to start in the bottom triangle because I don't have any of the angle measures for the top triangle yet. So let's start down here. I can say um, x plus 55 plus 55 equals 180, the triangle angle sum. Um, theorem, okay, so um, x plus 110 is equal to 180. So that means x is going to be 70. Okay, so if we start looking at the um, at the, the diagram, well, if this is 70 degrees, then um, this is 70 as well, okay? And now I can write an equation for the top. So I can say y plus y plus 70 is going to equal 180. So I'll combine those into 2y. Okay, I'll subtract 70. and then divide by 2. Okay, and it turned out all four of those triangles, uh, angles were congruent, but I was just taking it piece by piece there. Okay. All right, last problem. Uh, um, this problem, next problem is really interesting because at first glance it might appear like we don't have any angle measures at all, but we actually do. We have the 90 degree angles, right? So. Um, that's what we're going to use. Um, I have some um, I have some equilateral triangles, which means they're also equiangular. Okay, and it's always going to be 60, 60, 60, so let's put that in. Okay. 
in general, just anytime I find anything, I like to put it into the diagram. Sometimes you have more than you need, but that's okay. A lot of times, uh, the more you put in, the easier it will become, okay? And now looking at this, um, if I'm um, trying to find x, what I can do is use, like if I drew a circle like this, and this was the center of my circle, well, the circle would have a hundred, oh, sorry, 360 degrees, right? I was about to say 180, that would be a half circle. Um, so 360, all of those angles should add up to 360. So now I can write an, an equation for that. So I can say x plus 60 plus 90 plus 60 is going to equal 360. Okay, so let's see. Got 120 and 90, that's going to give me 210. Subtract 210 from both sides. And I'll have x. So x is going to come out to 150 then. Okay, that's the end of the section, and I'll see you next time.